Hey guys, in this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you about how to sell anything to anyone, anytime. Hey, it's Ted McGrath, and right now I'm going to talk to you about how to sell anything to anyone, anytime. And you can download my best selling book, How to Sell Anything to Anyone, Anytime, right here. So here's the big mistake that people make. Sell me this pen. What most people do is they try and sell you the pen right out of the gates. But here's the deal. What you want to do in sales is you want to clear out the possibility of ever failing in a sale and ever not getting the close. And the way you do that is you ask what's most important to your customer. See, I could sell you this pen right now. I could tell you all about the pen, but I could completely miss the mark. And the reason why most salespeople fail and they get one out of 10 deals or three out of 10 deals and they don't get 10 out of 10 is because they don't know what's most important to their customer. Now you'll hear most salespeople come in and they'll say, hey, sell people on fear or sell them on generosity or sell them on you know, what really is gonna help them in their life. But how do you know what's gonna help them? How do you know what makes them buy something if you have no idea what's most important to your customer? So I'm gonna give you a question right now that you can ask any single person that you're sitting in front of. And the question is simply this, what is most important to you about this thing? So if I'm selling you a pen and I say to you, sell me this pen, you're going to ask me, Ted, what is most important to you about pens? If I'm selling real estate, financial products, anything on the face of the planet, what is most important to you about real estate? What is most important to you about financial products? What is most important to you about clothes? What are you selling? Find out what's most important to your customer. Most people never do this. I can tell you, I've sat down in front of hundreds of salespeople and I've maybe had two or three people in my entire life ask me that question. And if you don't do it, you have a whole sea of possibilities of what the person might be interested in and you're just guessing. Most salesmen guess. That's why most of them don't do extraordinarily well. I've made millions of dollars in my career, millions of dollars online, millions of dollars selling from the stage, millions of dollars selling on videos just like this. The reason I've made that kind of money is because I know what my customer's thinking. I know what's most important to them. Now, if you don't know, you need to ask and find out what's most important to your customer. So most people will sell the pain. They'll sell the problem and they'll go, here's the pain, here's what it's costing you not to take action on this thing, you should do this right now. Now, that technique of what it's costing somebody not to take action is very effective, but not until you know what's most important to your customer. It's kind of like going from here in a world of possibilities to once your customer says, this is most important to me about this, boom, it's like laser focus, and then you know exactly, precisely how to sell to somebody. I'll give you a quick example of this. I was in the store the other day, yesterday, Armani, right? I walk in, Giorgio Armani, super high-end brand. I've been buying them since I was 21 years old. Now the salesperson, he didn't really ask me anything. I walked in, I was trying on different stuff. I was kind of like, ah, I was really excited. I'm not really in the mood for this. And I don't really see anything that I like. He never came up to me and said, what is most important to you about your clothes? Now, if he had asked me that, one of the things I have coming up is a movie that I'm shooting on my life story. So one of the reasons I bought clothes is I want more clothes for the movie. If he had asked me that, he would have gotten in communication with me. He would have known what questions to ask. He would have had one single important thing that's important to me, and he would have fed off that answer that I gave him. But he didn't. So it took me like 30 minutes of trying on different things, and finally my fiance was like, try on this jacket. And I was like, ah, I'm not really sure if I like that jacket. She goes, try it on. So I put it on, I was like, wow, I really like this jacket. And I bought two of them for $2,000 each. The sales guy didn't do his job. My fiance was better at selling than him and he was on commission. Why? Because he didn't find out what was most important to me. There was a sea of possibilities in the store of Armani and he didn't know what the one possibility was for me. This is the mistake that most people make. So number one, find out what's most important to your customer. Number two, tell them a story. Story sells, let's face it. You know, I have a life story that I've written on my own life where it's 70 minutes, I get up on stage, I play 12 characters on that stage for 70 minutes, and at the end of the day when I get done, people have an amazing experience. Now I do this story, I tell this story before anybody ever sees any of my business products at my seminars. Why? Because if they go on a journey with me and they see how I've produced results in my own business, 
Then at the end of the story, when they go to my seminar and they start seeing what my products are and they start seeing what I teach, they're gonna wanna buy it because they've already seen my story. They've seen somebody who's lived that experience already and they go, Ted did it, he got the result. If I follow his business processes, I'll get the result too. So there's two things that you really need to know about sales. Number one, you need to find out what is most important to the customer, right? About that specific thing that you're selling. The second thing you need to do is you need to tell stories. Now, a story could come in the form of your own life story, but also think about it. At the end of the day, sometimes your own life story isn't fully relatable. So you also have to have something called case stories. A case story is a story about a client or a customer that's had success. So if I sit here and I talk to you about a, a young sales guy named Alex who came to me and really wanted to actually sell and get into business to be an entrepreneur, but Alex had a stutter. So he was 22 years old and he came to me with a stutter. He's like, Ted, I really wanna get up and I wanna speak to people and I wanna build a business, but like I'm afraid to go do it because I have a stutter. And I said, Alex, why don't you just tell a story about how you have a stutter? Once you tell people, rather than them watching and go, this guy has a stutter, tell them a story about how you have a stutter and how when you were in sixth grade in kindergarten, that the teacher came around and you were singing that song, you know, who stole the cookie from the cookie jar and they came to you. And normally you go, who stole the cookie from the cookie jar? And it would be like, Alex stole the cookie from the cookie jar. And when they came to you and they said, who stole the cookie from the cookie jar? And you said, a -a 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 Alex. And you started stuttering for the first time. Why don't you tell that story? So Alex said, yeah, I can use my story as an asset to inspire my clients. And he got up and he did his first seminar ever and he sold from the stage. And with 10 people in the room, he made $71,000 at 24 years old. Not bad, right? So I just told you a story of what's possible for selling, even with somebody who has trouble communicating. When we think about sales, sales really is communication. So at the end of the day, you're communicating something to somebody. You're either gonna communicate what's most important to them by asking them, which is the first technique, or the second technique is you're gonna tell them a story about somebody who's already done it. And now they see somebody who's done it who's like an underdog, right? Why do you go to movies? You love the underdog story. You watch movies all the time because you're rooting for the underdog. So if you tell a story related to the product you're selling like this pen, right? And you tell it based on somebody who was an underdog who accomplished the results, well, anybody watching it would go, wow, if he could do it, I could do the same thing too. So this is just the simplicity of sales that's coming in here. Now I'm gonna give you another clue that I wanna share with you right now, okay? One of the other most important things that you can do is once you've established the number one goal of your customer, let's say I go, what's important to you about pens? And you go, you know, I want a pen that writes well, but most importantly, I want a pen that's flashy and looks good, right? Because when I go to my business meetings and my clients sign those contracts, I want them to sign it with a nice pen where they feel classy and they feel really, really good. So we go, okay, great, this person wants a classy pen. Now, somebody else might tell you, I want a really durable pen, pen that just writes and lasts for years and years and years and years. Somebody else might tell you, I don't really care anything about pens. I just want the cheapest pen that you got. So now you know where people stand. So when you know what's most important to them, then you link their number one goal to your product or your service. And this is where people make the biggest mistake. Now, if you just talk about your product and service, you're missing more than 50% of the equation. If I just set up and I said, this pen is so great, look at it. I mean, it has the word inspire on it here and it's got this gold right here and it's, and, and it's red. I love red, it's my favorite color. I don't even know if red's your favorite color, but it's mine and I love the word inspire, but I don't know if you do. So if I start selling you about the benefits of what it is to me, I'm not gonna sell you because it is what it is to me, not what is it to you. Now the really good salespeople can sell it because they're so passionate and inspired that they're really good at selling stuff. So their emotion and enthusiasm just inspires somebody to go, wow, like this guy's kind of charismatic or he's a little bit electric or she's electric and I should get this because they have it and I like them and I want to emulate them. But that's like two out of 10 times you're gonna make the sale that way. How do you get it to where 100% of the time people are saying yes? It doesn't mean they walk out of the door with the purchase. It means they say yes 100% of the time because they're there sitting in front of you because they want it. Whether they can invest in it or whether they decide today or whether they have the money, well, that's a situation that you have to handle with objections, which is also in my book as well. But the key is, when you know what's most important, let me ask you this question. How does somebody say no to what's most important to them? Who would do that? If I say this pen, a red and gold pen with the word inspire is, is my dream pen, it's what's most important to me, and you put it in front of me, am I gonna say no to that? 
because I know it's precisely, or you know selling it to me, it's precisely what I want. It's pretty simple, right? So what you need to do, the two factors, is you need to link the most important thing to your customer to the product or the service. So if I then sit with you, instead of saying, hey, this is, this is look, how, look how great this is, it's red and it's gold and it's got the word inspire, if I just then sit with you and I go, hey, you know, the most important thing you said to me about pens is you wanted something that was kind of nice and flashy and something that was kind of classy. So this is a really classy pen. Do you see how classy this is? Because you said you wanted a classy pen, right? They go, yeah. So it's classy. It's gold, and it's got red. And you know, what's your favorite color? And they might say something like, well, it's gold. They go, great. So it's got gold on this. Or they might say something like, it's green. It's like, OK, well, it would come in green, too. We could find you a pen just like this that comes in green. So now what we're doing is we're getting clear what's most important to the customer, and then we're linking it to the product and the service. See, what happens when you do that in sales is rather than being across the table from somebody where you're like, buy this pen from me, the moment you align with their most important goal about it, guess what happens? You become their partner in accomplishing it. So you go from the salesperson to more of the advisor, the partner who's saying, hey, let's, let's get this thing for you together because it's your most important goal. And then when an objection comes up, when you go to make the sale and the person goes, well, um, I don't have the time for this. They're like, really? You don't have the time for this thing that you said is really important to you? So like, question, where, where would you be spending the rest of your time? If this is so important to you, where are you spending the rest of your time? So let's say I'm selling a house to somebody and they're like, the most important thing for me right now is I want to get this house. It's one of my top goals and I want to make it happen. And they're like, well, I don't have the time to go look for houses. You're like, okay, well, you said this is most important to you, right? So I know what's most important to you. And then this is the house that you said you wanted to see or houses like this. So why would you not find the time and prioritize so the houses go up on the list and other things go down on the list? So every time you know what's most important to the customer, one, it's easy to sell the product or service that you're selling. That's the first piece. And number two, any objection that ever comes up, who would object to their number one goal? They're not objecting to your product or service. That's the thing that most people haven't figured out. When somebody objects, now they're objecting to their most important goal about that thing. That's the game. And I hear this all the time in different industries like, hey, Ted, if I'm in the health industry or if I'm in this industry, can I really talk to people about their whole life? Because you could take it a step further rather than knowing what's most important about the product or service, know what's most important to them in their life in general. So how does somebody ever say what's most important to them or say no to what's important to them in their life? So when you're aligned, when you align the customer, the customer's goals with what's most important about the product or the service that they're looking at, then you're bulletproof. Every sale you ever sit down in front of a person to make the sale with, every time you sit down, 100% of the time you will get a yes from the customer. Doesn't mean they're always walking out the door with it, but you know you did your job. You did 100% of what you were supposed to do to get the customer clear that I want this thing, it is very important to me, and now you're selling them on the thing that they want rather than on the thing that you want to sell. The more you sell them on the thing that they want, the more you'll sell the thing you want to sell. It's that simple. But most people never do that. So when I sit here and go, sell me this pen, most people will pick it up and they'll just start selling. As if like the word sales actually meant to just pick it up and just start telling me about it. No. When you think about it, selling something means you find out what somebody desires most and you match that thing up with what they desire. That is the key to sales, my friend. And if you do it that way, you're gonna be much more successful and you're not gonna feel like that person sitting across the table who's pushing your agenda on somebody else when the reality is you can sit across the table, know what's most important to them, lock hands with them, come to the other side of the table and be like, hey, we're on the same team here. You're saying no to this thing, but I want you to have what's most important to you. So let's talk about why you're saying no to the things most important to you, because when we started this conversation, you told me this was the most important thing. Is this still the most important thing? And the customer goes, yeah. So why are you saying no? I want to help you get what you want. And they go, oh, that's a really good point. Or I don't have the money. You don't have the money for the thing that's most important to you? Let's talk about how you could find the money for this, because I know you really want this pen. Right, so those are the ways to sell. Now, there's another way that people look at in sales, which is effective, but you don't start like this, okay? You start with, and I'm gonna repeat what I said. Number one, what's most important to them is the first thing you start with, okay? The second thing is you wanna link what's most important to them 
to the actual thing that you're selling. And the third thing is you want to back it up with a story about your own life or a story about your customer so the client can actually see themselves having the results, right? If I tell you a story about a real person who owns this product, you start to have an experience yourself as a human being owning that product. So when you do those things, you're in the money, right? The final thing that you want to do, which most people start with, is they try and get into the person's pain points and all their problems and all that stuff. But why would you talk to somebody about all their problems around a situation? You're just going to sink them. Why do you want to start out on problems? Why do you want to start out on pain? Why do you want to start out on fear? You're just going to put somebody in a bad position to where they can't make an inspired decision to say yes to the thing that they want. So only then, after you've established what they want, is then you talk about what it's costing them not to have this thing. You see? So you want to know, okay, so if you didn't get this, right, or the fact that you haven't purchased this house, or you haven't invested in those stocks, or the fact that you haven't bought that car, the fact that you haven't bought this coaching program, what's it costing you not to take action on this thing that you want? Really interesting question, right? Notice how it's now related, though, to the thing that they want. So they'll tell you. Well, you know, not getting the house of my dreams, you know, it's costing me a little bit of fulfillment. I feel like I've always wanted this and I've dreamed it up and I just never went the distance to get the thing that I truly wanted. And what does that mean for you and your family? Well, it means that my family is like not having the best things in life and they're not seeing dad be a role model and so they're kind of lowering their standards as well. And if your family continues to do that and you continue to do that, what will happen? Well, I just don't think we'll go after our dreams as much as we should on this planet. And then really, you know, at the end of the day, we won't live our dream. You know, I believe we are what we dream. That's my personal belief. And so we need to have clients dreaming up things that they want. You know, most people will settle for 90% or 80% or 70%. If you get a client to a place of total clarity, number one, on what is most important, that's the first goal. You get them to a place, number two, on matching that important thing to your product or service, boom, you're in the money. You now get a story being told to them that resonates with them, a story of a client that may be similar to them, you're in the money even more. And then you get to a place and you find out what it's costing them not to take action, you're 100% in the money. Now notice we've asked a lot of questions before we even ask for the check. You now know so much about your customer that asking for the check and selling is actually 10 to 15% of the entire conversation. 85% of the conversation is finding out precisely what the customer wants and continuously reinforcing what it is that they want. If you do that, it's gonna change the game of how you succeed in sales. So here's my advice. The next meeting you go into, right? When somebody sits there and says, sell me this car, or sell me this pen, or sell me this house, or sell me this, you know, or you sit down with a customer and they're like, okay, what do you got? Just cut to the chase. Cutting to the chase is really simple. You find out the most important thing that your client wants as it relates to your product or your service. You narrow the playing field, you're gonna win the game every single time because victory lane is right in your sights. You're gonna sell this thing as easily as you breathe because you're gonna know what's important to your customer. So that's what I want you to do. I hope that you enjoyed this. What I want you to do right now is if you haven't already, go ahead and download my free book right now, How to Sell Anything to Anyone, Anytime. It's a step-by-step -step system that shows you exactly how to ask the right questions so you can get the right customers and shows you how to diffuse any objection that a client brings up so you can bring in those customers and serve humanity. Also, if you like this tutorial, there's many more to come. Subscribe to my channel right down below. I know you're gonna really like the next videos coming out as well. And then I'd like you to like this video as well. If you really like it, it's gonna help me. So if you like the content, go ahead, like it right now. And then also comment down below. Ask me any question. I'm here to serve you and help you be really successful in serving your customer and selling lots of products and services. So I'll see you soon.